Hi, my name is Rich Levitan, and I'm going to share with you my insights into video laryngoscopy, but you should always refer to your operations and maintenance manuals for your GlideScope products. I think it's important for clinicians to appreciate there's three parts to successful intubation. There's finding landmarks, there's laryngeal exposure, and there's tube delivery. Let's run through hyperangulated video laryngoscopy with the GlideScope. I pick up the instrument with a two-finger grip. I'm going to scissor the mouth open using one and three. Very lightly gripping the blade, I am following around the curvature of the tongue. The first landmark to appreciate under direct vision is the uvula. Now, at this point, I can rotate the blade further in until I can see the tip of the blade seating in the vallecula. And here, minor adjustments will change mechanically how well the epiglottis is elevated. At this point, I can switch my grip, which gives me more mechanical advantage on the laryngoscope blade. But I do not want to over-insert. I want to make sure that the lower half of the screen is free for tube delivery. So the target, the larynx, is in the upper half of the screen, but the entire lower half of the screen is going to assist us with tube delivery. I am picking up our hyperangulated stylet and I'm holding it at the top, which is going to allow me the opportunity to pop the stylet up as I need to to facilitate tube insertion. Under direct vision, I am rotating the tube into the mouth and I am seeing it under direct vision and then I look to the monitor and I can watch that tip and I can specifically see that the tip is coming up over the interritinoid notch. I make a point of staying outside of the line of sight of the video device in terms of the tracheal cuff. I want the tube to go low, come up over the notch without blocking my line of sight to the target. Once I enter the larynx, I stop, I pop the stylet up, and now I can further advance the tracheal tube. Notice it's important to check the depth of insertion, and then on removal of the stylet, you want to make sure that the stylet is coming out towards the feet. That way, you do not have upward traction on the tracheal tube. I secure the tracheal tube at its proper depth, holding it close to the dentition, and then back out the blade. 